Hello, Internet. Maybe like some of you, I felt like sometimes in the past I might have had a touch of a sort of anxiety disorder. Then the pandemic hit. I self-isolated. And it turns out I was as bad around people. It may be like some of you, the one activity and place I felt my most content around others was in a dark room where white people try not to make a lot of noise nor talk. And no, I'm not talking about sex in the bedroom. I'm talking about watching movies in the old theater. I loved going to the movies. Ever since I was a kid, man, being a kid in the 80s, you could go to the movies and see a lineup like this all come out in the same week. And speaking of no sex in the bedroom, even my first date was at the movies. We went to see the somewhat scary and somewhat comedy The Burbs, starring Chet Hanks' dad. And I wore my nicest pair of pants, which at that time were these exact Popeye sweatpants, which now you can probably find on any old kid at some art show opening in Brooklyn. But unlike those Sailor Man sweats, my love never faded for the picture show. Everything about it, the laughs and the hype to the disappointment and the sweet sorrow of sadness, the whole spectrum of it, from the midnight showings of some hidden gem with no one else in the room to the opening night premieres of the nerdiest of blockbusters, the not caring about anything else for two hours. I go to the movies already in love with them. And sure, sometimes like love, you're going to be let down or pleasantly surprised or wish the experience lasted a little longer and not unlike love. There are possible unforeseen challenges to it, like will the person next to you be the kind of person that eats popcorn like they're punching their mouth? And never mind the Karens, it's the chatty Cathy's you got to look out for. Why the fuck you coming out paying to see uncut gems just to talk about how the other people in the office take you for granted for half the movie? We get it, Becky. Your talents are being wasted. And like love and life itself, there's the challenge of being brought out of the moment, the struggle of the focus and flow. Because I buy into these stories. I couldn't even sleep after I witnessed the demonic brilliance that was hereditary. And I'm still holding out for a possible sequel. But I can get distracted and go down a rabbit hole of thought that sometimes are far funnier slash darker than the comedy slash slasher plot themselves up on the once strictly silver screen. Like if I smell a smell I feel to be a non-movie-like smell, like mustard. When people are eating their dinner in a movie theater is the deepest of rabbit holes to fall into. Like when your dinner is at the movies, what's your lunch? Some red vines and a Mr. Pib? You're waking up to some Sour Patch Kids and a Grape Crush before you go and conquer the day. You crazy wonkas, tricks are for breakfast. But with all that being said, I am pretty excited to hit my local movie house soon enough. And it's looking like the first movie up is A Quiet Place 2. I remember seeing the first one like it was just yesterday. A movie I felt you know what you're getting into even without seeing the trailers. It's called A Quiet Place. But fate would play in that I got a guy right beside me that smuggled in two filled pockets of his windbreaker of individually wrapped hard candies. And not the normally packaged ones, but those kinds that flowed under the FDA radar, those black market buttes with no barcode and for whatever reason are singly wrapped in that kind of cellophane that you get flowers in, the extra thick shit. The kind of no-name treat that just has a cartoon of like a panda wearing a top hat with a fruit you don't even know the name of. And at closer inspection, even the panda seems worried you're about to ingest whatever he's selling. And how this dum-dum was unraveling it was like the anticipation of a fortune cookie desperate for one of those affirmations you now see on influencers' Instagram posts over a photo of them in underwear explaining what grief is. And the way he would refold the discarded wrapping back up was like he just finished reading a thousand paper cranes, savoring each fold more than the next, like he was just seven origamis away from saving his sickly anti-vax cousin. But with all that being said, I am excited to get back to a uh, normal. Back to that one thing, to that one place from the smells to the dimming of the lights, the being next to someone. 
the gentle shushing, when they're being a little too loud with excitement, excitement you somewhat judge if it's even sincere. The after you finished sheepishly asking, hey, what would you give that like out of 10? The noticing your feet a little sticky to the ground. The double checking if you heard their their rating rate. I mean, it sounded like a five, but waiting just a bit to see if there's a little post credits action. Seeing if they want to sleep over or should I get them an Uber. The me igniting a inevitable passive aggressive argument over them so quick to give it a five. They didn't even think about it. I know five's right in the middle. That doesn't mean that's what average is. Five's not average. Five is not good and it hurts. Okay, that wasn't about movies, that. That wasn't about movies. Fuck. This is Stranger Radio saying, Adios, amigos.